Good morning, everyone. I wanted to add um, a video notes uh, section on some things that are always on the exam and are also going to be uh, in your assignment tonight. And that's on modeling with differential equations and proportionality. And we could think um, proportionality constants and things varying proportionally. I'll talk about that in a minute. This stuff is always on the AP exam. First thing I want you to do is open your book to page 365 and look at number 34. So uh, pause the video if you need to, but uh, you're going to need your book open so you can see the problem. So on problem number 34, it's a problem about a landfill, and it says that a landfill at time t equals zero years contains 1,200 tons of solid waste. The increasing function w models the total amount of solid waste stored at the landfill. Planners estimate that w will satisfy the differential equation dw dt equals 0 0.04 times w minus 300 for the years 0 to 20 and W is measured in tons. And then on part A, and this is just like the extended response question I'm going to give you today, part A they say use the line tangent to the graph of W. The line tangent to W to approximate the amount of solid waste in the landfill three months later. Well, when we see tangent line, we want to think derivative. And this is a key thing that a lot of uh, calculus students miss, is that a differential equation, dw dt, is the derivative of w. And so, if I want to use the line tangent to the graph of W, then I want to use dW dt. And um, so, in other words, on part A, when they tell me to use the line tangent to the graph of W at t equals zero to approximate the amount of solid waste in the landfill three months later, well, all I have to do is use the differential equation right here and they did say the line tangent to the graph of W at t equals zero well in the problem they told us that there were 1200 tons so you just put the 1200 tons into our differential equation we have this 0 0.04 times W minus 300. You put that 1200 in for W because they did say at T equals zero. And when you find this, when you find this number, that number, whatever it is, is going to be the slope of your tangent line. Very important thought to not, we, we cannot forget that dw dt, when you see that in a differential equation, it still means it's the derivative of something. And a derivative still means the slope of the tangent line. Once you know the slope down here, then you can use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, and they were wanting it at three months later. So, um, you know, you would, you, you would think x equals 3, okay? Um, so that helps you on part A. Part B, I'm going to let you work through. Part C on this problem is just exactly what we've been doing, separation of variables with an initial condition, okay? And so there, I'm giving you 33 and 34 tonight. But I'm also giving you an AP extended response question that is a lot like this, and you have to have this understanding that dw dt 
is the derivative of w or remember when derivative when we think derivative we think tangent line we also think the rate of change and that's going to be important on the AP extended response question now I want to talk about this um, idea of proportionality okay and uh, it's really a pretty simple concept um, and it comes back to this idea of direct variation and there's direct variation and then there's also inverse variation all right and this is something that uh, sometimes is covered in pre-calculus we didn't touch on it but I want to make sure this year that my calculus students know what these uh, expressions mean if they say for example y is proportional to x or they might say directly proportional to x then that means that I can come up with this very simple equation y equals some constant times x all right that's if it's proportional or directly proportional if it says that y is inversely or they may use the word reciprocal okay is inversely proportional to x or they may use the word um, reciprocal or varies inversely then it leads me to this expression y equals k some constant over x and if you just trust this that if it's proportional it's y equals kx and if it's inversely or the reciprocal proportional reciprocally proportional then it's y equals k over x and the reason I'm going over this is because it's going to show up in some of the problems I'm going to assign you tonight dealing with differential equations they're going to ask you to come up with a differential equation all right with a situation so let, let me just kind of uh, get you rolling here with um, a sample word problem and this will be from the pre-calculus world and then we'll turn it into the calculus world so let's say that we had this statement in Ohio the state income tax is proportional to your gross income well the moment you see that it's proportional or directly proportional then I'm thinking y equals kx but what do these variables mean well the state income tax is going to be the y all right and it is directly proportional or proportional to our gross income which would be the x and so you know in this case what are we looking for when we find k well we would be looking for the percent of gross income that would turn into the tax you owe the state of Ohio okay so that's an example of how you take a word problem and turn it into an equation with this okay 
So now let's look at how this relates into our calculus world and differential equations. And let's look at this problem. Um, and this problem looks really scary and has lots of words in it. But in reality, if you understand what I just showed you right here, then it's really um, a pretty easy problem. So let's read it together. If the pressure P applied to a gas is increased while the gas is held at a constant temperature, then the volume V of the gas will decrease. Okay, and that word decrease is important. The rate of change of the volume of gas with respect to the pressure. The rate of change of the volume of gas with respect to the pressure. Well, rate of change, we think derivative, so the rate of change of the volume of gas with respect, with respect to the pressure would be dB dP. The rate of change of the volume of gas with respect to the pressure. Okay, dV dP. Let's keep reading. Is proportional to. So we know we're going to be equal to something and there's going to be a K but let's keep reading. Is proportional to the reciprocal of the square of the pressure. There's that word reciprocal that I just talked to you about. This is an inverse proportionality, which means the K is going to be on top. The other variable is going to be on the bottom. So on this problem, I'm going to have, oops, the K on top and I'm going to have the other variable that we're proportional to. Well, what are we talking about? The reciprocal of the square of the pressure. So its pressure is the other constant and we're squaring it. So it's K over P squared. And then we have to choose, uh, this is a multiple choice question, they're asking which of the following is a differential equation that could describe this relationship. dV dP equals K over P squared where K is a negative constant. Okay, And we've also got the same thing up here. dV dP equals K over P squared where K is a positive constant. So the two differential equations are the same. Which one do I choose? Well, look up here the volume V of the gas will decrease. So that means that we need a negative constant and the correct answer is C. So just remember if it is proportional to, all right, you could have a differential equation that's something like this, dV dP equals KP, something like that. That's if it's directly proportional to. But if they start talking about the reciprocal or if they start saying it's inversely proportional, then you would have to have something like dV dP equals K over P. All right. And of course, in this case, they told us that we had the square of the pressure. So that's why we squared this. And then finally, um, I want to go over one more of these from the problems I'm assigning you. And these are the actual problems that I'm assigning you. So on number two, I don't want to do it entirely for you. But I do want to read it with you and uh, just kind of give you some guidance here. The weight of a population of yeast is given by a differentiable function W, where W of T is measured in grams and T is measured in hours. The weight of the yeast population increases with respect to T at a rate that is directly proportional. Okay, directly proportional. We're thinking of this. Okay, we're thinking of this expression if it's directly proportional. So immediately, that's a clue that we're not going to have the W in the bottom. All right, so that's a clue. So the fact that it is directly proportional is a real big clue for where that W should be. But what I wanted you to see is that on this problem, we've got some other information. At time t equals 10 hours, the weight of the yeast is 200 grams and is increasing at the rate of five grams per hour. Which of the following is a differential equation that models this situation? 
So using our heads here with this five grams per hour, and we've got uh, the weight of the yeast being 200 grams, um, you look at these answers, there's one of them that we can immediately rule out, and it's this one. It's not even a differential equation because they're asking for a differential equation. So you can tell that the chances that we're going to use this 10 is pretty slim, all right? five grams per hour and I've got 200 grams if you think about just a basic percentage five compared to 200 and then reduce this fraction I get 1 40th and so there's a couple of the problems tonight where you have to work with these numbers to come up with your constant of proportionality I told you this one's directly proportional so we know it's going to be dw dt equals, because it's directly proportional to the weight, okay, dw dt equals kw. But in this case, they gave me more information that allowed me to make a statement about k. And so I know I've led you to the answer on number two, but that's okay because there's other problems. There's a total of six problems where you have to work through and set up the differential equation, but it's not very difficult if you just remember this. And we will stop there for today.